Ryan Smith, Nikki Antonio, Denise Driehaus, Nan Baker, and Stephanie Kunze here with me to talk about the epidemic gripping Ohio, many Ohio families. Today I'm pleased to announce that the Ohio House of Representatives has introduced a comprehensive set of 11 bills to address Ohio's opioid epidemic. They are grounded on three basic principles. Number one, we must stop more people from becoming addicted. Number two, while addicts are steeped in their addiction, we must both keep them alive while preventing them from diverting more pills out of our medical system. And number three, we need to get more people into effective treatment so they can recover. This summer, our committee learned how pervasive and devastating the opioid addiction is in Ohio. Drug overdose has now surpassed traffic accidents to become the leading cause of accidental death in Ohio. And prescription opioids account for more deaths than cocaine and heroin combined. Heroin arrests are skyrocketing, prompting the Attorney General to tour our state and look for solutions. <coughs> heroin is available in every community in Ohio, and there are reported cases where it's easier for teenagers to obtain than beer. Heroin use and prescription opioid abuse are merely different phases of the same addiction in the same person. 80% of heroin users are estimated to have begun by using prescription opioids. As their addiction progresses, they go from prescription pills to heroin. Prescription painkillers and heroin are similar in chemical structure, and their similar molecular shape is what attaches to the brain's mu receptor, activating the receptor and releasing dopamine. Abusing opioids is initially a choice, a horrible choice that leads to devastating personal and family consequences. But once addicted, the addiction progresses much like a physical disease. When opioids activate the mu receptor, the mu receptor, dopamine is released not only in areas of the brain that govern pain, but also those that govern our basic survival instincts. So people are fooled into thinking that opioids are just as important to them as food and water. It's nearly impossible to stop solely on your own. Intervention and treatment are needed in order to recover. Treatment does work and people recover. Over 800 million doses of opioids were prescribed in the state of Ohio last year for 11 and a half men, wo men, women, and children in Ohio. Nearly every prescription comes from the prescription pad of a licensed doctor in Ohio. In committee, we heard estimates that about 40% of those addicted started with a valid medical condition, condition and valid prescription, but ended up using abusing the medication. The other 60% results from recreational drug use after pills are diverted out of their parents' cab medicine cabinets or by concerted efforts to defraud the medical system. The opioid epidemic population of today is different than the traditional heroin users in big cities. One treatment in Columbus estimates that they serve only 15% of inner city people struggling with addiction. The other 85% travel in from the surrounding suburbs. In addition, many rural areas are beset by this epidemic with a much higher per capita rate of addiction than even in the large cities, but often without the local resources to deal with it. This progression is destroying the fabric of many Ohio families and communities. It is killing those struggling with addiction and it destroys their parents and family who struggle to help their son or daughter, often bankrupting their parents as they bounce from one treatment center to the next. Their children are placed either with the grandparents who now have to not only raise their grandchildren, but also try to help their children. Oftentimes, their children are taken by Children's Protective Services. And Children's Protective Services is now being overrun by this epidemic. In Toledo, for instance, they no longer have enough foster families to keep up with demand. The police, sheriffs, and highway patrol are focusing massive amounts of resources on trying to keep this problem at bay as crime is perpetrated to feed the addictions. The court system is being asked to serve as the de facto treatment center for this problem, incurring massive costs to the criminal justice system. Our jails and prisons are bursting at the seams with low level, low level drug felons, and while serving their sentence, the addicted population, instead of getting treatment, learn from other prisoners 
how to better commit crimes and feed their addiction. In many areas, companies have job openings, but can't find workers to fill those jobs because they can't pass a drug test. Our Medicaid costs are rising as those struggling with addiction come on to government entitlement programs, and they now have expensive comorbid, comorbid physical problems such as hepatitis C and HIV from dirty needles. The point is of this is that we are incurring already an immense societal cost of this drug, drug epidemic that is alone estimated to cost over $3.5 billion in the state of Ohio. 